Good evening. This is Tuesday, May 27th, 161 days until the 2008 presidential election. His presidential campaign already defined in part by his admission that the economy is hardly his area of expertise and by the acknowledgement that the four dozen lobbyists still in his campaign might be a bit of glaring hypocrisy for a man who purports to be a maverick. John McCain saw the two stories merge today when federal disclosure forms proved that John McCain was being advised on the mortgage crisis by a lobbyist still being paid by the investment banks to help them in the mortgage crisis, a man identified by some economists as as the principal enabler of the mortgage crisis. Our fifth story, a countdown exclusive tonight, John McCain's Phil Graham scandal in a moment. First, as preface, the Obama-McCain battle today, the presumptive nominee and the all-but-presumptive nominee, both spending their time this week in the battleground states of New Mexico, Nevada, and Colorado. Those are worth a combined 19 electoral votes, only one less than Ohio. Today in Denver, during a speech speech on nuclear proliferation, in which he attempted to frame himself as the JFK candidate, Senator McCain interrupted four different times by protesters. Perhaps they just wanted to correct his pronunciation of Ahmadinejad. President Ahmadinejad has threatened to wipe Israel off the face of the earth and represents a threat to every country in the region, one we cannot ignore or minimize. You know... This is, uh, this may turn into a longer speech than you had anticipated. Um, That's all, folks. To a demonstrator shouting Iraq was not a threat, Senator McCain responding directly. And by the way, I will never surrender in Iraq, my friends. I will never surrender. Our American troops will come home with victory and with honor. And that's my message to my friends. And we are winning. If this is what winning in Iraq looks like, I hate to be losing. A troubling new report from Bloomberg News highlighting a surge of a different kind tonight. Housing foreclosures in military towns now surging at four times the national average. Senator Obama today visiting Las Vegas homeowners struggling under the threat of foreclosure. Later, when speaking to a crowd of about 75 homeowners, the Illinois Democrats slamming Senator McCain for having adopted the Bush administration's and the lobbyists, quote, bad ideas for solving the housing crisis. For far too long, Our policies have been measured by how much sense they make for Wall Street and K Street and not the difference that they're going to make on Main Street. This election must be our time to stand up and say that those aren't the American values that we believe in. We believe in an America where you can leave your children with a little more opportunity than you had, where you aren't turned out of your home because a mortgage lender went for the easy buck and didn't disclose all the information that you needed. I do not accept an America where Washington's only message to working people is, you're on your own. We're here once again to reaffirm the fundamental American belief that we are in it together as Americans. Because the dreams of hardworking Americans like Felicitas and Francisco matter to us. Their struggle is our struggle. Their dreams are our dreams. And that's why we call it the American dream. Senator McCain's dream of putting his lobbyist problem behind him quite possibly turning into his own nightmare. Just two weeks ago, the senator having purged four staff members, including one of his general co-chairs, from his campaign based on their lobbying activities. And breaking news tonight in a countdown exclusive, we have now learned that the other general co-chair, Phil Graham, was working as a lobbyist for a foreign bank here in the United States. That is, the former Texas senator was paid to lobby Congress specifically about the mortgage crisis. At the exact same time, he was helping to craft Senator McCain's economic policies and home mortgage crisis policies as an unpaid McCain economic advisor. Well, I I just want to make a point that that I think is being missed here. Graham officially joined the McCain campaign on March 12, 2007. But as early as October 2006, Real Clear Politics reported that McCain was already relying on Graham for fundraising help. McCain's top political operative at the time saying Graham, quote, obviously gives us advice on economic issues. 
At the same time he was giving that advice, federal disclosure forms reviewed by Countdown show that Graham was simultaneously being paid by UBS to lobby the United States Senate about the mortgage crisis, opposing government regulation, helping to kill a 2006 anti-predatory lending bill that would have tightened consumer protections and might have mitigated the current crisis. As recently as December 31st of last year, still working for Swiss bankers specifically to help kill the Emergency Home Ownership and Mortgage Equity Protection Act and the Helping Families Save Their Homes in Bankruptcy Act, a bill that would have let bankruptcy judges adjust mortgage terms so American families facing foreclosure could repay their loans and keep their homes. Three months later, McCain gave his broadest uh, statement you, to uh, date on the mortgage crisis. Our financial market approach should include encouraging increased capital in financial institutions by removing regulatory, accounting, and tax impediments. Removing regulatory impediments, a Graham mantra. Politico.com writing, some housing experts and economists see Graham's thinking in the recent housing proposal. The McCain campaign confirmed that Graham had input on the speech and that McCain consulted Graham specifically on the housing issue. Some economists blame Graham in part for the crisis itself. As Senate banking chairman, Graham consistently weakened federal regulations. His deregulation of energy commodities first helped his wife's employer, then killed it. In 1999, the Graham-Leach-Bliley Act, which McCain voted for, broke down the decades-old wall separating commercial banks, heavily regulated, from the wild and woolly world of investment banking, a wall erected in 1933 to prevent a repeat of the Great Depression. One month after Graham knocked that wall down, UBS bragged to investors that his bill would liberalize restrictions. UBS bought Payne Weber the very next year and hired Graham before he even left the Senate. Graham's deregulation helped set the stage for an explosion of banks slicing up subprime mortgages, bundling them with other mortgage slices to hide the credit risks, and selling mortgage stew to other investment firms. That gave lenders powerful incentive to make as many loans as possible, regardless of risk, because they could still turn around and sell those mortgages almost immediately. Graham himself said he was totally unaware just how many bad mortgages his own company bought. At last count, UBS had lost $37 billion in the mortgage crisis and plans to lay off 5,500 people next year, primarily in the U.S. McCain has hinted he might make Graham his Treasury Secretary. But Graham's economic track record worries even McCain's own advisors. One of them telling the Washington Post last month, I, for one, have thought about it a lot. One economist said McCain is counting on people having very short memories and not connecting some pretty obvious dots here. Two weeks after that report, UBS removed Graham from its list of registered lobbyists. But federal lobbying forums show at least two other McCain staffers, congressional liaison John Green and national finance co-chair Wayne Berman, were both still lobbying on behalf of the mortgage industry as recently as the first quarter of this year. And the McCain campaign responding tonight in a statement. Spokesman Brian Rogers saying, quote, it is sort of nonsense when you consider that the reality is that places like UBS and Wall Street want a bailout from the federal government. And unlike Senators Obama and Clinton, McCain is the only one who doesn't want to give a bailout but wants to focus on homeowners who are truly in need. The reality, the statement goes on, is John McCain has proposed a common sense plan to help truly needy homeowners enact reforms to make sure this crisis never happens again. Phil Graham works for a big Wall Street bank. He's not benefiting from John McCain's plan, so I don't see a nexus. Nothing in our report, of course, referred to the bailout aspect. And even if it had, the Fed just changed its policies to start the unprecedented step of extending its bank rate overnight loans to investment firms, UBS included. As for Roger's statement that McCain has a plan to help homeowners enact reforms, homeowners do not enact reforms. Lawmakers enact reforms. As far as McCain's planned reforms go, he has said, as we mentioned, that he wants to remove regulatory impediments and not add them. Finally, Senator Graham got his current job after helping deregulate the banking industry in the first place. It should be no stretch of the imagination to see that achieving further deregulation under a McCain administration might also accrue to Senator Graham's benefit.